This was this weekend on CNN. We have to turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. There are, are people on YouTube, for example, that have a larger daytime, a larger audience than daytime CNN, and they are extremely radical and pushing extremely uh, radical views. And so it's up to the Facebooks and YouTubes in particular to think about whether or not they want to be effectively cable networks for disinformation. And then we're going to have to figure out the OANN and Newsmax problem, you know, that these companies have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure yes. we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast and such to be bringing them into tens of millions of homes. He didn't say far right or all no. right. He said conservative yeah. influencers. Yeah. That means like mainstream to me. This idea that people are so willing to stifle speech they disagree with, Andy, is dangerous. We used to say that, that you know, religious speech, conservative speech should not only be tolerated, it should be welcomed. There should be a free and full exchange of those ideas. Look, Voltaire, the French philosopher, said, I disagree with everything you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right, right. to say it. If it's just being fed one way, again, it does feel a little uh, like what you hear comes out of North Korea, which is just... Uh, here's one viewpoint. This is the viewpoint we all agree on. We all understand in America. We all understand in society. And we don't move. We, you're not allowed to. You're not even allowed to hear the other person's point of view. This is Martin Luther King Jr. The day we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Right. Birth. Someone they wanted to silence. They wanted uh, absolutely wanted to silence him. mainstream media. Yes, at the time, which was very yes. racist. And we need to we need to realize that he was a voice of change. He was a a, a progressive voice of change. And I use that with a little p. He was asking for. America to rethink their thoughts on racial justice and racial equality. It was there was some in the media that liked him. There were many in the media that did not like him. He writes a letter from the Birmingham jail. He didn't do a Facebook, of course, it wasn't that kind of media access then. But if you disagreed with it, what are you going to do? Silence his voice? That's why they do. were trying to throw him in jail. Yeah. To silence their voice. We are called to speak for the weak, for the voiceless, for the victims of our nation. And for those it calls enemy. What he was saying then was radical. Radical. Some would call it offensive. They didn't want their kids to hear it. But now that would be, you know, totally normal. That would just, I mean, it wouldn't even be on the specter of wrong, right? It should be accepted. He's totally right. Nothing to debate there. But as we progress, then there's other things to debate. You know, how do you, how do you, how do, and how do you have those discussions if it's only one sided, several members of Congress in some of my discussions have brought up uh, media literacy because that is a part of what happened here. We're going to have to figure out how we rein in our media environment so that you can't just spew disinformation and misinformation. Based on what? Who's misinformation and disinformation? You think it is? misinformation and disinformation, I happen to think it's the truth. Am I not entitled to speak and hear my viewpoint? I think I am. It's trying to eliminate any counter viewpoint, Andy. That's to me is what it is. It's yeah. if your narrative is not our narrative, we don't want you to have access then to that narrative. Then you're changing people's, people's minds because, minds because that's because all they're they hearing. Nowhere else to go. Do you want to the shoe to be on the other foot? where all of a sudden the liberal view can't be heard? No, and I think that's the main difference between these conservative outlets and the liberal outlets, is the conservative outlets go, no, you have every right to be there exactly. in this space. They would never, ever promote this idea. No, never. Ever. The beauty of a country that supports free speech is it gives the outlet for the American people here in our country the ability to redress their grievances, to petition Congress, to speak out on the streets, to engage the culture. So no if you squelch violence. that down, you end up with violence in every other culture. That's what happens. I think on MLK Day, especially when talking about speech, talking about the need to allow speech that, that again, may seem at the time radical to some voices, to some ears. And then you see, like with Martin Luther King, that over a period of time, it becomes totally acceptable. Like, like this is nothing, nothing to disagree about that everyone on every side of the aisle politically and all over the world agrees with and that you're 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 in the minority of the minority if you disagree with what Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about in the 1960s at the time extremely radical they would consider that offensive speech that children shouldn't be able to hear that white kids shouldn't be able to listen to we don't want to get to that point